should be the final of these little videos that I'm putting together for each of the methods of data collection that you might choose from. So as you can see from the links at the bottom, and I'll scroll down here, so we've already gone through all of these that you can see here on the page, and we're right down here now at the bottom when this one on document analysis. For this particular method of data collection, I decided to use an article that uh, I thought gave a pretty good overview of the topic. Essentially what you're looking at when you're looking at data, uh, de sorry, document analysis, or sometimes it's called artifact analysis, is essentially the things that you can pick up. So schools generate things. Um, you know, when you walk into a school, for example, there is just stuff all around. In some cases, it's stuff you can pick up and take with you. In other cases, it's stuff that's just visually there. So when you walk into, for example, to your own schools on Monday, you'll notice that as you walk in through the front door, you know, there are things on the wall. There's bulletin boards. There's likely a trophy case of some kind. Um, you know, there may be newsletters or other flyers that are available uh, that, you know, folks can pick up things from the PTA and all that kind of stuff. All of those things are artifacts or documents. So one of the things that I particularly like about this article here, I'm going to give it a sec here to load up, um, is the fact that it gives you a good overview of looking at documents or artifacts as a... Uh, qualitative data collection. So they go through and talk a little bit about what artifacts are, or what documents are, and what you could have for that. Um, they talk a little bit about why you might use documents and how you might incorporate incorporate documents, uh, specifically mentioning things like you know in multiple methods of data collection and allowing you to triangulate data that you get from other sources, which will become important, as I've mentioned before, when we get to this idea of um, reliability and validity. And, you know, they go through and talk about, you know, some specific uses that you can have for documents, um, which I think is quite good. And you'll notice one of the things that, and this is one of the advantages of picking an article, which is why I've used a couple of articles or reports, is that often they tend to be cited. So you'll see some citations here, some of which are probably familiar to you at this stage. So if you look, for example, here, uh, you see Miriam. Um, you know, and that's a, a name that, for, particularly for those of you that are doing case studies, uh, Yin, that, you know, those are all names that, you know, should be familiar to you folks at this stage. They also go through and talk a little bit about analyzing documents and how you would go about doing that analysis. Um, that's useful, but it's a little bit more useful for next week, although, or two weeks from now, although I would actually sort of take you and, and make sure that you do take a look at that particular aspect of it. And grounded theory is a type of methodology uh, that I don't think anyone here has picked. So you can sort of skip over that section about using documents and grounded theory. <clears throat> and continuing on down to the bottom, you get some you know, different types of, of documents and how you can analyze those. Um, although, again, that's still more to grounded theory. And then, again, one of the advantages of having an article like this is you get the reference list that you've got here. So if documents are something that you might be interested in using, you've got a list now of various places that would be useful to you um, for finding out additional information. And you'll notice a number of these, because a lot of the qualitative research journals now, uh, particularly the qualitative report and the Journal of Qualitative Methods, are available in open source format, so they're available online. So what you find here is that um, a number of the things that are being cited here are of either books or they tend to be articles that are available online. Um, so that's a nice useful function that you've got in there. What I've done with the other uh, videos thus far, I wanted to show you a couple of things from my own collection that um, I've personally found useful or at least that have found their ways onto my bookshelf. Um, the first one that I'll mention when it comes to documents is this uh, qualitative media analysis and it's by David Althead and Christopher Snyder. Uh, so again, it's Qualitative Media Analysis. Um, it's the second edition. This one is looking more at um, media artifacts 
as opposed to physical or document artifacts. So um, if you're looking at things like, um, you know, videos that f may be, uh, you know, produced by your, uh, you know, by the school, or if you are having your students actually creating artifacts that are being incorporated in there um, that come in electronic format. Uh, you know, there's sections in here about things like social media and video games and uh, television and film and, you know, those kinds of, of electronic sorts of artifacts. So it's not a bad little resource, although, to be honest with you, the one that I've always found the best um, if you're looking at the Handbook of Qualitative Research now, the current edition, to the best of my knowledge, is the fourth edition. I've showed you that in one of the earlier videos, and I brought it to class when we met two weeks ago. This here is the second edition, and in this particular edition, uh, there is a chapter. Specifically, it is chapter... Uh, 26 uh, by Ian Hodder, H-O-D-D-E-R, I-A-N-H-O-D-D-E-R, Ian Hodder, um, which I think is actually just an exceptional uh, resource. It's, it, it's one of the reasons why this is actually the only book that I have about artifact analysis, and the reason I got this one was because when this came out, the idea of electronic artifacts uh, wasn't as prevalent, so I decided to get this one to complement that because this one focuses solely upon electronic artifacts. Um, but if you want a great overview that will provide you with um, pretty much all of the resources that you need for just document analysis and document collection in general, uh, the second edition of the Handbook of Qualitative Research, the chapter by Ian Hodder, H-O-D-D-E-R, is the one to look for. Um, you have to go back to the second edition because for whatever reason uh, they decided that in the third edition and the fourth edition um, Ian Hodder is not one of the chapter authors so there isn't a chapter there written by him on documents in the later editions so you need to go back to the second edition um, and for reference purposes the second edition is the one that was published in 2000. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for uh, document analysis, and uh, I'll probably put a little concluding video at the end now that I'm finished all of these others, and uh, that'll basically be it for this week.